G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews today. I'm looking third instalment of the FEO V camera review. Now, in the video I posted originally, I hadn't tweaked any of the settings. It was straight out of the box and it looked better than the 600 TV line, but the colors were washed out. The contrast was a bit light and, you know, I thought so. On the weekend, I played around with it, wound up the contrast, wound up the sharpness, wound up the color saturation, and this is the results I got. Now, here we go. This is a video I filmed and I tried, I thought, Let's check out this latency thing. So I went out and did some really fast circuits. Well, for me, they're really fast. I think you know, Boris B and Metal Danny probably yawning, but it's, they were fast circuits for a nano like me around the trees at the local park. And it was interesting. I've got to say, I, was, I felt like I was out of control most of the time because I really had to anticipate things a whole lot more. The latency was definitely noticeable. It wasn't unflyable as you can see I was able to fly and negotiate between the trees and under the trees and fly along pretty close to the ground without too much issue so the latency was you know it wasn't a deal breaker as I've said in the past but if you're a real you know heavy core hardcore mini quad flyer it's probably not going to be the camera for you however however if you look at things like the sky in this particular shot here where I'm sitting in front of some trees because someone had planted their mini quad in a tree and they were climbing up to get it out you can still see the clouds in the sky uh, against the you know the, the bright background and the dark trees all the details are still highly visible and that's really good the sky features didn't blow out quite often with a camera if you have this kind of uh, setup you'll find that the sky just goes completely white and you can't see any cloud detail but with the feov the wide dynamic range is sufficient to actually let you see all those little details now i don't give a damn when i'm flying a mini quad whether i can see the clouds doesn't worry me but if I'm flying out there with a fixed wing and perhaps I'm doing a bit of scenic touring and I just want to appreciate the, the view, then those little features make this camera really, really good. And you don't give a damn about 100 milliseconds of latency because you're, you don't need to be avoiding objects that are you know, right in front of you or just around the next corner. So the FEOV camera is a really, really good camera if you want to get some leisurely laid back FPV with the best view possible of the world around you. So in that respect, it's probably worth the extra 20 bucks or so. If you're a mini quad flyer or a proximity flyer, then hey, stick with a 600 TV line in, in my opinion, because it's just cheap, it's robust, and it just damn well works so well that it's hard to beat it, even if you've got an FEAV. And so, but just to prove, just to prove that uh, uh, all does not go well. After flying around with the FEOV camera for quite some time and having a crash, um, I went back to the 600 TV line. I noticed that the colors actually seem a little bit super saturated with the 600 TV line Sony camera, but I was flying around and just to prove that no matter how much or how little latency you have, I had another crash. <laughs> so that's it. If you've got questions, comments, let me know. I'll be publishing, I'll probably put a web page up because it's easier than doing it through YouTube of all the settings I've been using on the FEOV and maybe some sample footage from each of those settings. And I'll try to describe what those settings do. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'll mention that in another video and give you a link to it so you can go there. And if you've, got, if you've been using the FEOV and you've got some really kick-ass settings that seem to work really well for you, then why not post them in the comments on this description and then maybe you can share that with others and other people can try because, you know, it depends on what you're flying, where you're flying or what the conditions are like as to what are the optimal settings. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I will now get back to the bench so I can bring you more videos uh, because I know up north it's probably snowing and here it's beautiful with blue skies, light winds and it's nice and warm. So there you go. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I hope you don't have too much envy. So now, back to the bench for me. See you later.